Now to a CNN exclusive. The Department of Justice may be taking steps to indict music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. Two sources close to the investigation tell us that a federal grand jury may soon hear from Diddy's accusers. Since November, Combs has been named in eight civil lawsuits, seven of them directly accusing him of sex assault. CNN Entertainment correspondent Elizabeth Wagmeister is here with more on her exclusive reporting. Uh, Elizabeth, tell us what you're learning. We have learned from two sources that potential witnesses have been contacted and notified by federal investigators that they may be called to testify in front of a grand jury. Now, there is no timeline for when this may happen. We are hearing from sources that the investigation is very much still underway. We remember back in late March when two of Diddy's homes in Los Angeles and Miami were raided. That was the start of this criminal investigation. And now, with our reporting that this go to the grand jury, this is absolutely the biggest escalation in this investigation and gives some indication that authorities are looking towards a possible indictment. Now, as you mentioned, there have been a slew of lawsuits against the music mogul. He faces eight, seven of which are directly accusing him of sexual assault. I hear from a source that many of these accusers who have filed these civil have been brought in for questioning, some of them being called in numerous times. We hear that many of these potential witnesses have been cooperating with these investigators, some even offering up evidence that they believe could be of note for this investigation. Uh, Elizabeth, the majority of the plaintiffs in the civil suits, they've now been interviewed by federal investigators in the criminal probe. We know the LAPD previously said that they couldn't bring charges based on that 2016 uh, Cassie video because of the statute of limitations. What could federal investigators be looking at here? That's absolutely right. Because of the statute of limitations, that provides really a blockade for many of these accusers. But we do know that this federal investigation, which to your point, Boris, is of criminal nature, is largely based on the accusations that are in these many mounting laws. So this is a criminal investigation at this point. Of course, we remember that when Diddy's homes were raided, that his attorneys called it a gross uh, overuse of military force. They called it a witch hunt. We know that Diddy has uh, denied many of these allegations that have come against him, although he hasn't responded to all of them. So at this point, it is an investigation. We have to wait to see where this may go. Again, this is a large escalation now that we know that potential witnesses have been notified, do want to bring them to testify in front of a federal grand jury in New York City. So much more to come, but also, another thing that we have to watch out for, Boris, as these current cases are being litigated, are accusers going to come forward? There has been a constant domino effect since November when that first suit from Cassie came out, and now could there be more? Yeah, they just keep coming. They do. Uh, Elizabeth Wagmeister, thank you so much for that reporting. Diddy's new marriage appears to be on the rocks already, with suspicions that his wife and baby mother, Dana Tran, smitched on him to avoid going down with him. Earlier this week, it was reported that Diddy had married Dana. However, insiders now believe that Diddy forced Dana to marry him because he knows he'll be prosecuted by a grand jury and wants Dana to keep the dirt she has on him hidden. If anything, the situation has worse as the feds shut in on him. He must have noticed because the next thing we knew, Diddy was marrying his baby mama, Dana Tran. Dana is the mother of Diddy's youngest child, Love Combs. The birth came as a major surprise because Diddy's youngest children were 16 at the time and we assumed he was done having children. However, Diddy and Dana have been co-parenting love for the past year. We didn't think they were still together, thus the announcement of their marriage came as a surprise. Fans instantly decided that he most likely married Dana because he didn't want her to be called as a witness against him if the government hauled him up on many charges. I'm not sure whether you heard. But word is that the feds have called a grand jury and are already seeking for witnesses to testify against him. The next thing we knew, he and Dana were married, and under the law, she cannot be called to testify against him if they are married. Thus, the marriage appears dubious. Dana was also caught wearing a ring in a recent Instagram post, which fueled suspicions even further. However, a source attempted to deny Diddy's marriage and downplay the rumors. According to another insider, Diddy and Dana married in a hurried ceremony. He appeared to have done everything he could to prevent Dana from spilling the tea on him. This makes me wonder how much dirt Dana has, because if he's willing to lose his bachelorhood and marry her, she must have some serious tea on him. 
To be honest, considering the evidence presented against him in recent weeks, we should not be shocked. Not only are he facing seven or eight lawsuits, but additional evidence has been disclosed against him. As part of their investigation, the feds have dug deep into Diddy's background. Let's just say they discovered a lot of tea on him. 50 Cent also did his fair share of research for this documentary. And, he unearthed some really disturbing details about Diddy, such as how Diddy allegedly murdered Kim Porter's best friend, Erica Kennedy. Erica's death has always been a mystery, and nothing about it makes sense. Nothing about her quick and bizarre death makes sense, and there is a good chance she was not alive. Erica was a well-known blogger, writer, and publicist for fashion heavyweights like Tommy Hilfiger and Diddy's scene John in the 2000s. She was not just close to Kim Porter, she also had a strong bond with Kimora Lee Simmons, making them inseparable. Erica and Kim Porter were even honored to be bridesmaids at Kimora's wedding to Russell Simmons, and Erica was named godmother to Kimora's daughters. Given how close Erica was to Kim Porter, you'd think Diddy would be on his best behavior around her, right? However, rumors claimed differently. Erica wrote the best-selling book Bling in 2004, which many believe was inspired by Diddy himself. The novel took a spicy, in-depth look at the music industry, following a flashy hip-hop mogul who signs a young female star to his label and then tries to rule her life. Sound familiar? It's unsettlingly similar to Diddy's relationships with Kim Porter and then Cassie. Erica even compared the book to Cassie and Diddy's real-life situation, writing, This undercover Cassie Diddy stitch is so Lamont Meany that it freaks me out. I conjured this, Erica was one of the few people that tried to expose Diddy back in the day. Even then, she knew she needed to be cautious since Diddy was not the type of person who enjoyed being exposed. Given what we know about Diddy, Erica was clever enough to avoid going into too much information. Unfortunately, that was not enough to safeguard her at the end of the day. Erica's book Bling featured a character that was a dead ringer like Diddy. Diddy was upset, as one could expect. Insiders in his circle say he was upset and was talking about wanting to silence her. Erica was one of the first to bring up the questionable aspects of Diddy's parties and lifestyle in 2004, when other people avoided discussing such matters. When asked about her book, she responded, everyone kept talking about how scandalous that book was. I simply didn't see the big issue. I knew I could write a story about a P. Diddy party to teach these people what a scandal is about. If it wasn't enough proof that she knew a lot about Diddy and was willing to testify, I don't know what is. The circumstances surrounding Erica's death are complex and have prompted many questions. She was known for being vocal and had planned to reveal additional information about Diddy in another book, but she died in mysterious circumstances in June 2012. Adding to the mystery, police have never declared the official cause of her death, only indicating that she allegedly committed suicide. This amount of discretion is somewhat unusual, especially since it is typical to publicize the reason of death, even for public figures. Erica's predicament has been kept under wraps, raising suspicions that something sinister is going on. Following her death, people were bewildered and suspicious, prompting calls for a thorough investigation. Some supposed insiders claimed Erica had been depressed for a long time. However, the peculiar and frightening manner in which her death was handled has led many to question the official narrative. A supposed friend wrote, I'm not sure how Erica died. I know she struggled with depression, just like I have. We seldom talked about our personal experiences with depression in specific terms, instead referring to its impact in cryptic, knowing ways. I'd periodically hear from her, and she'd mention in passing that she hadn't been out of her sweatpants in days, or that her apartment had felt especially dark this week. Hey y'all, I've been going down this ditty rabbit hole, and I came across an interesting story I want to share. I never heard of Erica Kennedy until today. I went looking into a story about Kim Poor and ended up coming across Kim Morley Simmons, and Erica Kennedy. So Kimora Lee Simmons and Erica Kennedy were BFFs. Kimora Lee Simmons and Kim Porter. Kimora Simmons and Kim Porter in a game together as models. They said that Kimora was crushed when she learned of Kim's passing. But we're here to talk about Erica Kennedy. You see it says right here, Kennedy was the best friend of and television personality Kimora Lee Simmons, serving as the maid of honor at her wedding to Russell Simmons, and she's the godmother to Kimora's kids. It says, following her graduation, Kennedy started a career working as a publicist with various top fashion designers, including Tommy Hilfiger and Ron Combs. Erica Kennedy wrote this book called Bling. 
it was about a music mogul who started dating this really, really young girl and some other stuff that somebody wouldn't want to get out. Erica Kennedy's book was a New York Times bestseller. Thing by Erica Kennedy. When 21-year-old Mimi travels from a small town in Ohio to New York for an audition with Lamont Jackson, head of the hottest hip-hop label in the business, she has no idea that her life is about to change overnight. But sometimes change has a price. And now, bling. Lamont sauntered into the grill room like he owned the place. Mr. Jackson, the maitre d' greeted him warmly. Mr. Green is waiting at your usual table. Lamont gifted him with a courteous half-smile. Their usual table was the best one in the Midtown Manhattan restaurant where the power players converged. Erica ends up dead. Kennedy's cause of death has never been publicly announced. Here in essence says Erica Kennedy what her passing teaches us. As of this writing, no official cause of death has been released. I just pulled this up and according to them, there's still no official cause of death released. So Kamora lost her best friend, Erica Kennedy, unexpectedly. Then she suddenly loses Kim Porter. This guy is Ed Winter. Ed Winter's high profile autopsies, okay? Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, Brittany Murphy, Corey Haim, Paul Walker. When Kim passed away, Kimora was like, nah, 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 nah. I'm not hearing that. This is my second best friend. Funny. Kim Porter was supposedly has said to have passed away from low bar pneumonia. I'm going to just leave this here for y'all to read. Y'all can pause it if you want. As you can see in that report, Kim Porter's death was ruled a homicide. It was ruled homicide by Ed Winter. So because he said all that, he got fired. But would you look at that? So it says Jaguar Wright supposedly claimed there was an autopsy done on Porter, which claimed that there was poison in Porter's body at the death. This allegedly meant that her death was ruled as a homicide. However, that autopsy supposedly disappeared. Ed Winter, who was the coroner to celebrities at the time, reportedly did the autopsy results for Porter, allegedly ruled it as a homicide. So they fired Ed Winter and replaced him with another coroner, and that coroner came back with the, oh, she died of natural causes. So nobody knows what Erica Kennedy's official cause of death is? Crazy part is, I didn't even know Kimora was the one that found Kim Porter. She lost both of her best friends, one that was directly involved with and one directly and kind of indirectly involved with him. Um, some of those things come back to haunt you over time. Um and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I'm not really sure, but I've been through a lot. I've seen a lot. Again, like I'm sitting here with my kid, my house. She posted this to her story. As you sow, so shall you reap. I'm like, guess that's towards. And if you're wondering, well, why would I guess? That? Because back in 2004, Sean Diddy Combs allegedly threatened to hit Laura Lee Simmons. So it looks like Diddy has landed himself in some pretty hot water because people are now come speak their truth on his true nature, including Kamora Lee Simmons, who used to be best friends with Diddy's ex Kim. So I'm hearing Kamora Lee brought some hard evidence to show how Diddy allegedly unalived Kim Porter because she was going to expose him for being a bad guy. And y'all, Kamora had a lot lot of tea to spill about Diddy. So break it down. Ask yourself, why are these women, young women, um, not supportive or not really trying to hear that? Or what have they gone through? What have they seen that they, you know, that has turned them off or that has put a, a bad taste in their mouth? You know, we've seen a lot lately. I mean, the worst we thought of Diddy was that he was a gay man on the down low who had affairs with younger ministry, and everyone was calling him fruity. And we thought that that might have been the worst about him. I mean, there were reports that something to do with Tupac's murder, and he had allegedly put a hit out on Tupac because Tupac was about to expose him for being on the DL. But that was just speculation, and even though the police spoke to him regarding Tupac, they let him go because there just wasn't enough evidence to pin anything on him. Living our fucking best lives she continued as a result we formed a visceral trust for one another similar to combat veterans if erica became unresponsive it was most likely due to a bad day a terrible day that for a depressive can mean the end of all days the playwright beth henley wrote about such a day in her 1978 melancholy comedy crimes of the heart in which three sisters are forced to deal with the loss of their mother who hangs herself after writing i had a terrible day she went on to elaborate. I may never know what happened to Erica, and honestly, 
I'm not sure I need to, since I know she bore a burden that many of us as writers, black people, and women bear. She just needed to get the branding right, she stated. What I wish for her though, and maybe for myself too, is that she could have realized that what and who she was in reality was so much more meaningful than any kind of magic branding formula. I'm not sure if it's just me, but isn't it odd that this person claims not to be close to Erica while saying they don't want to know what happened to their alleged friend? When someone close to them dies, you would expect a good friend to want all of the information. And don't get me started on how certain it is that Erica was in such a poor situation that she allegedly took drastic measures. Meanwhile, Erica's close friends Kim Porter and Kimora Lee described her as a happy person who would never commit suicide. The case just faded away over time, leaving everyone in the dark about what had happened. Can you believe it? According to sources, a catastrophic cloudburst occurred after Kimura muttered something to comms who threatened to strike her. Kimura confirmed that this actually happened, saying, and I was pregnant, the moron. For a while, it appeared that Kimura was about to reveal some ditty information. Second chapter where she's storming out of a restaurant after her boy toy, Kyle, tries to stick her back and it's her birthday. Oh! Oh! <laughs> if Sydney hadn't been pissed, she might have become aroused when Kyle gra grabbed her arm and pinched her against the wall at the top of the staircase. Sydney, what's wrong with you, he said, as if he, had, if, if he was in a position to question anything. You can't just leave. Oh yeah? Watch me. We haven't paid the bill, he said, trying to keep her from squirming away. She looked up at him early and tried to avoid direct eye contact. Those misty green eyes could be her undoing. You haven't paid the bill. Kyle released her arm and rested his hand against the, against the wall. Hearing that one word come out of his disturbingly sexy mouth and that humoring tone made her that much anger. She hated when men who were clearly in the wrong tried to turn things around and make it seem like it was the worst. She knew what she knew what he was going to say. She was overreacting, being too emotional. She should calm down. Well, maybe she didn't want to fucking calm down. She was mad as hell and she had every right to be. Since she landed the job at Caché, every guy she dated made less money than she did. And for Susan, she always... For the same reason she always had a dollar and a kind word for a homeless woman, she thought drunk, druggy, loser, when she passed a homeless man, she hadn't respected a one of them. Women women had to work harder for less money, all while trudging around like Sherpas loaded down with guilt and loathing. Every time a guy pretended not to see the check a waiter had presumptuously set before him, she said, if I can make it, why the fuck can't you? But she didn't have to respect someone to screw him. In her experience, it's that powder when you didn't. Kyle was the male version of the blonde, but the boy was a sexual savant. She'd give him that. It was thing what he could do with just one finger. He was the first man ever to make her come from intercourse, which, being an all-around do-it-yourself girl, unnerved her at first. It still did, though not so much that she didn't give him the opportunity three or more times. She usually lost interest in men around the eight-week mark, but due to his sexual prowess, she'd Kyle around for six whole months. He wouldn't make it to seven. In the last few weeks, his liberal use of let's and us and we, in addition to his persistent pleas that she go see spam a lot with his okie doke to be western parents cousin, was speeding up the demise of what had been a perfectly lovely and mutual beneficial meaningless relationship. Had she asked him to go anywhere tonight? Of course not. She preferred, preferred to order in. That way she had distractions, the phone, TV, Twitter, to stay above boredom. <laughs> Going out to do, they had to talk for two hours straight. <laughs> but, Kyle, but Kyle had insisted, just as he, he'd insisted ordering a celebratory bottle of champagne, even though she told him she didn't like champagne. She never drank, not even on New Year's. I wanted to do something special for you, he said, then treat me to a Manny Petty, stupid. <laughs> In the six months they'd been together, Kyle, a struggling actor who often worked as a server for glorious food, had not paid for a thing. Not a cab ride, not a movie, not a damn frappuccino. At first it was, oh, I don't have any cash on me. And I lost my credit card and I'm waiting for the replacement. Or for the last four months, I'm just waiting for the residual check on that commercial I did. By the time she realized he was the brokest all her struggling artist flings, she was hooked on the sex. And with his soulful green eyes, so pink lips, and nearly hairless body, he was too delicious to resist. Just thinking about them that formed on his lower abdomen made her forget the fact that his ends were not long, as Jeffrey James Elliott, her go-to gay, might say in a ghetto moment. Uh -huh. 
Jeffrey considered it a sacrilege that he paid for everything, but she was a modern woman with her own ends, and she secretly enjoyed being a mission. She always got to pick the movies and whether they ordered Mexican or Chinese, and whenever she called asking him to say, make a midnight trek from the deep recesses of Brooklyn where he lived in a row he roommates to service her in her cozy West Village apartment and pick up a pint of haagen on the way, he always came. Did she? <laughs> <laughs> All things considered, it wasn't such a bad deal. Tonight, deal breaker. The one, the one time she said, looking him dead in the eyes, to prove to herself that she could, she wasn't going to let him sweet talk her and she wasn't going to be a slave to her own desire. She didn't need his magic fingers. She had the Hitachi magic wand. <laughs> the one time you say you're going to take me out, you pull this shit? <laughs> we squeezed past them to get down the stairs and Kyle pulled her through the doorway into the bar area. Okay, I know mad, he said, but I'll get it next time, I promise. Sydney looked, shook her head and oh, Kyle, didn't he get it? She had been a willing co-conspirator in most modern arrangement, but there was always a bubbling <coughs> undercurrent of latent resentment just for surface. On his part too, she says. Tonight's eruption brought it gushing forth like hot molten lava, and there was no way to reverse the flood. It was the natural order of things. Taking it a step toward him, she put her hands on his flushed cheeks, gave him a long, soft kiss on the mouth, and whispered, Sweetie, there isn't going to be next time. <laughs> <laughs> she shaded him when Cassie filed her petition, adding, As you sow, so shall you reap. She also paid close attention to the situation, because once Cassie and Diddy resolved it, she shared a flashback photo of Kim Porter with heart emojis. Kimora went on to say, I'm starting a girl gang of women who will aggressively support other women. So raise your hands if you want in, because if we have enough individuals, we will undoubtedly acquire coats. Kimora, one of Kim Porter's closest friends, cast shade at Diddy, making him look more worse while he was already being dragged through the mud. Kimora's home suddenly caught fire. Fortunately, she and her children remained safe. She said, my house caught fire. The children and I are okay. I can't thank the battalions, ladders, and units enough for their many hours of service today, which could have saved our lives. According to current reports, Erica was not the first person Diddy allegedly murdered after writing about him in her book. According to a fresh theory, Diddy may have contributed to Terence's unexpected death. Terence, the same man who wrote a book on Diddy's life, died unexpectedly, similar to Erica Kennedy. He was discovered dead at home after police performed a health check because he had missed work for several days just like Erica. The cause of his death is unknown. Dean's book, Mogul, dives into the life of a hip-hop legend and all of the shady methods he employed to reach the top. The characters are almost too recognizable, especially Pop, who is supposed to be based on Andrew Harrell, the man who introduced Diddy to the industry. An excerpt from the book reported Pop as saying, all of them have to suck some D to get to the top. However, many of them have and continue to do so. Trust me, there was always some new, young, fresh, wide-open, rough-neck robber willing to go to any length for a record deal, a movie role, or some publicity. Some people assume they are wiser than everyone else and can survive without a gay brother. As I previously indicated, we are present in all aspects of the industry. Nine times out of ten, we recognize one another. We can either pull you down or keep you where you are with a simple phone call. Another paragraph in the book reveals that the billionaire had a deal with Pop in exchange for stardom. The book says, I unbuckled my jeans and they slipped down to my ankles. I was hard. It clashed with the fabric of my boxers. This was it. I received an offer that would put an end to my years of struggle and endeavor to make it in this field. An opportunity for my big break. It was time for me to eat and eat big. I wanted to listen to my music on the radio, and the man sitting there sniffing my crotch looked happy to oblige. For the first time, I heard my own voice. The words came out of my belly, throat, and lips. This is consistent with Jaguar's statement regarding Andrew Harrell allegedly assaulting Diddy. There Kim Porter was working on a book before she died, and Al B. Shore was working on the documentary of his life. And then he goes into a coma. Has Puffy ever been in a coma? Is he, has anything happened to him? He must be the lucky motherfucker because it seems like everybody that worked at Uptown Records from the very beginning is gone. Just him. I guess Al disappointed you. You know, it's, 
I speak for a reason. When you see this bullshit ass motherfucking game fucking with people that you love, that you like, you know, that you... It's too many coincidences. Too many. You... Fuck you, honeycomb. Oh. <laughs> we gonna get you and your little dog, too. Mm. And congratulations, young Miami. <laughs> Run as fast as Cassie did. <laughs> Has anybody asked they self about that shit? I mean, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people are asking about <laughs> what's, what's going on with it. Is, yeah, a lot of people are looking at it like that's the way the new relationship should work. What, uh, to get paid? Yeah, she was getting 500K a month. She quit because he, he dropped her down. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where they're at with it now. No, but understand this. Think about this. And there are women in this room. Why would you quit? What the fuck is going on that 250000 ain't enough? Ladies? Like, fuck the fact that, that, that he... I'm just saying, fuck the fact that he cut it from 500 to 200. Who the fuck gives a shit? 200 k Who? 250 k Who turned it down 250 k a month? Mm. What the fuck is going on in that relationship that 250 k ain't enough? Could see some things. Could see some things. That ain't worth 250 k That's got to be some dark shit. Mm. Like, people are not understanding that that girl quit 250K. Mm. Four million every quarter. Well, I'm sorry, a million every quarter. <laughs> Shit. Now, she was getting two million a quarter, but then she got, you know, fuck you got going on. That's so deep <laughs> that it ain't worth a million a quarter. Mm. They told a story um, about Cassie one time, mm -hmm. and she was saying um, someone had asked her why she cut her hair. And she was like, uh, well, uh, Diddy said he, he just liked it that way. And then she answered the question. It was like she was in a trance. <laughs> like she was just like, I just don't know. Diddy just said he would like my hair this way. Mm -hmm. and, he, <laughs> and it's like, they was like so in awe, like how she didn't have a thought about it. It was just what he yeah. wanted. That's how he operates. He has people followed. It looks to be a recurring motive here, right? He also stated that Capricorn had prepared to file a police report against Diddy, but someone from Interscope Records intervened and bribed her not to. Capricorn also went on a rant about Diddy after Cassie's story made headlines. And, like Suge, she acknowledged that the company had hidden and assisted him for far too long, and that he needed to pay for his crimes. She made this statement on Twitter. Don't take the path of the wicked. Don't follow those who do evil. Stay away from that path. Don't even go near it turn around and go another way. Proverbs 414. Doors will be unlocked and you must be prepared to walk away from the money. 2011 was hell. For context, all of this happened in 2011 and her remark that it was hell led me to conclude that much more had transpired than she admitted. She went on to accuse the company of enabling Diddy's bad behavior by covering for him or watching him injure women around him. She said, black women end up becoming the sacrifice. For the last 11 years of my life, I had to deal with everyone's insane dedication to the devil. I hope this is the end. I don't think highly of any of you. You can't keep your head down and pretend everything is fine anymore. Do better. She concluded, they will skin and wear you, lovely daughter. Then pretend they never meant to skin you. Kim was the only one who didn't change up. The only one. These were dark days. Personally, I am quite triggered. I have a piss over. I never earned it. Rip, Kim Porter. Capricorn definitely despises Diddy, so it's not surprising that she wants to testify against him. Even more shocking, Azalea Banks verified rumors that Diddy assaulted Cassie and other women. She even claimed to have witnessed Diddy place his hands on Cassie, saying, this is true. Diddy reportedly beat her up so badly that he took her on a three-week vacation to Hawaii, so no one would see or wonder how her face got so ugly. So, do you realize how chaotic things must be for Azalea Banks to agree with you? Azalea is known for being rude and nasty as, so if she is speaking out against Diddy, he must be extremely messed up. There are even reports that he is pimping his daughter Ava. My name's Ava, I'm a Scorpio. No, 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 what's your last name? Oh. What's your other oh. last name? Ava Veroni. Ava Veroni Cole, it's, it's breaking news. Diddy adopted a white child. <laughs> I want to I will tell them the story about how I adopted you. But you still have beautiful parents, but you're my child also. But please, please, 
tell a story. So, <laughs> was on the streets, <laughs> and Papa Kung decided that he would like to be a caring man. So then he saw me, decided to pick me up, and said to come inside and sleep in the city. um um, just play because it's, it's crazy out here online. So, so <laughs> I, I, play with the kids. I got the new mother. Say, say all of that. It's, it's crazy out here. Um, Jesse and Lila, when I was six months old. Six months. <laughs> and six then months. basically, um, sister, all four six of us. So. Six months. I all come over. Yeah. And, and it's Ava Brioni Combs. Come on. However, in the wake of Diddy's essay allegations, numerous sources have began to speculate that something terrible happened to Ava and that she was allegedly mistreated by Diddy. You might be asking why Dana Tran chose to marry Diddy, given who he is and what he has been accused of. According to a source, Dana had no choice but to marry Diddy against her will since he is seeking to protect himself and is willing to do anything, even using someone else to conceal his tracks. Fans have been all over this charade of a marriage, stating things like, Diddy absolutely did all that stuff and more, and I believe now more than ever that he was involved in Tupac's murder as well. He is wicked in every way. Diddy allegedly blew up Kid Cutie's car, had orgies with older women as a minor, assaulted Cassie, fractured Kim Porter's nose on a yacht, stole from his musicians, and failed to notify Lil Kim MJ about their cooperation. That man's wickedness has now caught up with him, and Diddy is a truly nasty person who is able to escape the evil power and enter this world. He should be pursued, and I pray that the survivors find justice, peace, and healing. This situation is dirty and insane, but I'd like to know what you think about it.